Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about EU transformations, so specifically for Nebris, uh, since he's talking about kind of learning how EU per tick and packages requests and transformations work. Uh, but first, for Nebris as well, I have a couple things I'd like to talk about that you mentioned in your latest episode. You said, I wish there was a way to get cobblestone for nothing, and uh, there is. It's called the Igneous Extruder. You place it, give it a bucket of lava, bucket of water, and it generates cobblestone forever. It doesn't use any of the water, it doesn't use any of the lava, and that's it. Done. Perfect. Uh, yes, so the other thing is you said there was a way you wish it would stay day all the time. Of course, in NEI, I could set it to midnight, I can set it to day, I can, you know, turn off the rain. Um, but if I right click these buttons, I've now disabled all of these times, and if I set it to noon now, it will always be noon since I've turned off the night and the dawn to noon time. So now I, it'll always be noon in my world, which is great for recording and playing around with electronics and things. Now let's talk about EU. EU is, of course, an energy unit. Uh, it's measured per tick, which is uh, a unit of time. How much time doesn't really matter, so much to say is a unit of time. Uh, or slash p, which is per packet, which is a unit of size, specifically a unit of size as EU is moving. So uh, this MFSU outputs 512 EU per tick, and it can do that as one package of 512, or if it's being requested from different sources, it can output that as two 256 or uh, you know 428 EU per tick packages. But if it can, it will always output 112 EU per tick. Um, and this is what makes stuff blow up when you connect to it, if, you, if it's not expecting or it can't handle 512 U per tick. Now it can take in much more than that. Uh, here you can see it is uh, taking in a lot. And if you look here, this is outputting, generating and outputting 512. So is this one, so is that one. So if we read this with an EU reader, we'll see that it's getting 1,536 EU per tick. If we slap another one on the back, the math is a little bit easier to look at. And now it's getting 2048 four times 512. So yes, it takes in much more. What's happening is it's requesting um, its full power allotment. And we'll get into requests here in a moment. Um, first, we need to talk about transformers. A transformer can only do one transformation per tick. And each transformation can be up to the max input of the transform transformer. So here's what I mean. Uh, here we got an MFSU, we'll just reset it. And the MFSU is wanting whole bunch of power, so it's asking for power. The MV transformer can only do one transformation, so it asks for 512, which is convenient because that's exactly what the MFSU can put out, 512. So we'll see 512 here, it gets transformed, and now it's 512 here. This seems like the same thing, but what's this is one 512 EU packet, and this is four 128 EU packets. Uh, we can illustrate that by grabbing a gold cable Uh, gold double insulated cable. Uh, gold cannot handle 512 EU packets. It burns up instantly. But it can handle 128 EU, EU packets, so there you go. This is still 512, and this is still getting 512 EU per tick through a gold cable instead of through the fiber cable. Um, if this was one 512 EU packet, it would burn the cable. Uh, but it's not, so yeah. Um, now it can only do one transformation, so this is asking for a whole bunch of power, it gets to here. This asks for 512 EU, since that's the most it can transform. So it asks for it, and uh, it picks 512 from somewhere. So here you can see it's 512, oh we need to reset some of this, you. 512 EU per tick, and it gets it from here maybe? Here. One of the two. It doesn't uh, necessarily care which one. Uh, it takes, I believe it's the first one it finds, <laughs> um, which is usually the closest one. In fact, it's always the closest one unless uh, they're to the same distance, in which case then it uh, picks whichever one it found first. In this case, it found this one first. Um, so, yeah. But it, this one then is not being utilized at all. You can see zero EU. And it'll just continue to pull from there until this MFSU is fully charged. All right, so one transformation per tick. Machines and storage devices like the MFSU request EUs as a packet. They request one packet every tick from every available source. 
Here I've got an MFSU, which is empty. <laughs> yeah, see, empty. And it's requesting 512, well, it's requesting, really, it's requesting 10 million EU from every source. So it runs down this line and it goes, ooh, two power sources. These are MV transformers, which are as good as power sources. So it asks this for 10 million EU and it tells it, I can only give you 512 as for 128 EU packets. So it requests 512 from here. So we should see 512 in this cable. It transforms it. So this is might as well be gold cable because it doesn't matter. So this makes four 128 EU packets, that's 512. Uh, same thing goes out this direction, so it requests from here as well. So this is 512. It transforms it, so again, this could be gold cable. Oops. And uh, they combine here, so this is now, well, let's pull from here, 1024. And, uh, but this 1024 is in 128 EU packets, so this gold cable doesn't have a problem transmitting it. We're getting 1016 since we are beyond 3, which is where we start getting lost from gold cables, which is why, if you can afford it, you should still use fiber cables. 1024, which is what this is getting 1024. This is in 128 EU packets. Now, if we expand this idea, we can see that it doesn't matter. Um, it'll pull from every available source. In this case, it's getting 4096 EU per tick. And if we replace this, it's they are all in 128 EU per tick packages. 10, 20, 40, 96. Great. I know this is a lot of numbers, but uh, the numbers are important when you're working with um, the details. All the same rules apply to low voltage transformers. So I've got a similar setup. We've played with this before. So it's requesting power from both sides. I replace this. It's request now requesting 10 million EU from both low voltage transformers. Now when it gets to the low voltage transformer, the low voltage transformer can only transform 128 into 34, 32 EU packages. So that's what we'll see here is 128. And that's what we'll see here is 128. Um, this is medium voltage coming from the medium voltage transformer and this is low voltage. If we grab a copper cable, we can see this is low voltage power, but it's still 128 EU, it's still 128 EU of power, it's just now in 32 EU per tick packages. Um, if we used copper here, it would dissolve, right? Okay. Same with here, it would also blow up, okay. So here we've got 128, which is requesting back. Now the medium voltage transformer says, I have no problem with 128, so it requests 128 from the MFSU, so that's what we'll see here as well, 128. It's average and sometimes calculations are funny, but it's 128 into the transformer, which is 128 into the medium low voltage transformer, which turns it into uh, low voltage power, so 32 packets, 32 EU packets, and into there. Same thing on that side, so this will also be 128. So if we want to get 512 out of this MFSU, then we have to um, increase the amount of low voltage transformers. In this setup, it requests. 10 million EU from every power source. In this case, uh, all these low voltage transformers. Each of these says, oh, well, I can only give you 128 as 432 EU packets. So low voltage, right, from all of these. So it'll say, I can give you low voltage power, 432 EU per tick packages. And with four of those, four times four times 32 is 512, choking on my numbers. <laughs> And uh, that's uh, just fine because these four 128 packages with, that these need to run is what the medium voltage transformer outputs. So has no problem getting that 512 from the MFSU and this is uh, medium voltage power. So this will get its full 512 EU per tick as 32 EU packages. Now, when the output, how much power you have, can't fill a system, or, or when the requests, when the output can't output enough power to fill the requests, that's what I mean by this, it splits the power, and sometimes it does that oddly. I don't know why it does this oddly. Um, if somebody does know for sure, um, 
I'd love to hear it and link me to uh, proof and an explanation of it. Uh, let's reset these. Here I've got two MFSUs which are requesting 10 million EU from the power source. I have this hooked up to an AESU. This is set to output 32 EU per tick. It can do that as two separate packages or as one package, however it sees fit. Um, in this case, it's outputting six, a 16 EU package to this MFE, MFSU and a 16 EU package up to this MFSU. Even though the top MFSU is twice as far from the storage device as this one is. I, I don't know. If we increase the distance, this one's now getting 23, and that one is getting 8. Why? I don't know. It's not resistance in the cable, because this isn't more than 40 blocks, but for some reason that one doesn't get as much. I don't know why. I don't. Alright. Now, it's important to keep in mind, machines don't pool requests. Transformers do. So four macerators are going to request four separate packages of 32, or if they're upgraded, more EU per tick. So here I've got set up, this is, we'll do that in a second. <laughs> here we've got set up six macerators. Each macerator is requesting 85 EU per tick. If you multiply that by six, you will get 512, 510, close enough. Yeah, 510, I was rounding the math. Um, which of course is, can be provided just fine by the setup that we were talking about earlier for low voltage transformers, one medium voltage transformer, and a uh, high voltage power source. If you want to have more macerators, then you have to have more power coming in. Uh, I should note and let you guys know these are set up with the energy upgrades and the overclockers. Um, they'll request as much power as they need to be filled. Now the they will request these in low voltage power, so um, you know this is low voltage power even though it's 87, you know, 85, 87. It's only not 85 because I had disconnected it for a second. Um, 85 EU per tick, but it's requesting that in 32 EU packets and then one that's kind of an odd size. If you provide a macerator with power that it can't get, for example, 512 EU per tick, right, that's what makes stuff explode. So even though this wants 80, 85 EU per tick, it wants that in separate packages. It requests as many packages as necessary in order to fill its power source um, every tick. So it'll pull as much power as it needs as, as it can, really. Okay, so these are running. These are being filled with cobblestone and having their sand removed and stored over there. Um, yeah, so this works great, and this works just fine if you want to have more macerators just uh, mathematically increase your low voltage transformers. And once you pass four, add another medium voltage transformer and uh, another power source as well because um, this is being maxed out. Its output is maxed out right now at 512. Um, if we hooked up another medium voltage transformer to this it wouldn't output any more power uh, because it can't. Right. Okay, so after all of this I still recommend and suggest that the best way to power a macerator, especially once you've upgraded it a little bit, are to use these transformer upgrades. Each transformer upgrades makes it so the macerator can request and, and handle higher voltage power. So if you give it one, now it can take medium voltage power, and if you give it two, now it can take high voltage power. That's the 512 EU per tick, which is exactly what an MFSU outputs um, when it's connected to any kind of power source. So now this runs just great, and I don't have to worry about transformer arrays. This greatly simplifies my setup. Yes, this is a little bit more expensive since my six mace raiders were running off of four low voltage, one medium instead of the cost of this transformer upgrade, which um, you can see here is a medium voltage transformer plus with some extra cables. So, um, and so yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think for the simplicity of the setup, uh, I think the cost in this case is worth it, unless you can't afford it, which in Nebris's case, Nebris can afford this. So Yes, um, this is what I recommend hooking it up with transformer upgrades and connecting it directly to high voltage power. This will also make this request larger EU per tick packages, which means it can be filled from large arrays more easily and with less computations, reducing lag on the server. Anyway, I know that's a lot of information, but I hope I was helpful. I'm Mondef, and I'll see you next time.